Welcome back to the channel. Another episode of On The Screws Podcast. If it's your first time here, I'd love it if you could go below, like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so every Friday afternoon when we pop out a new podcast episode, you'll be notified. If you'd like to listen to the audio version of this, same title, anywhere you stream your podcasts. And if you're not already, head over and follow us on OTS Golf on Instagram. Lots of great content there. But... Let's get into the episode with another Canadian, Zach Viminitz, five years at Moorhead State University down in Kentucky. We're going to talk a little bit about the college route, heading into professional golf, some of the off-season, caddying, etc. And of course, I run them through the swing oil segment. Let's get into the episode. Uh, NCAA version, we've done a couple in the past. We've had Andy Walker on, um, VCU head coach. Uh, a couple players, and we have a Canadian with us. So, Zach Viminitz, um, you're from this area, right, Zach? Yeah, Whitby, Ontario. Whitby, Ontario. So, Bryce is a uh, hometown as well. Both these guys living in the States. Um, not sure if you're home right now, Zach, but we can uh, get into it a little bit. And, uh, of course, I'm just over in Bowmanville, so a uh, short drive for all of us. Well, uh, me and Vim grew up together playing hockey um, and golf, obviously. Um what since we were probably nine or ten maybe younger a long time ago yeah but uh we lived we we're both from whippy so we kind of built our friendship as we grew up and i kind of took the hockey route and he took the golf route so um he's now playing at moorhead state in kentucky so how's that going for you yeah it's been good this is my uh fifth year now actually so I'm in the, I'm the old man here. We actually got three guys that are fifth years, so it's not nice. too weird. Nice. And then you also have Nolan Pierce, who's, I mean, Blake, my brother's younger buddy, who's also from Whippy. How's that been? You've been kind of taking him under your wing and stuff? Yeah. It's fun having two Canadians. So we got Pierce and uh, his buddy Piazza came too. So now we got three Canadians on the team. That's sweet. That's kind of rare for a, a NCAA yeah. golf team, I feel like. Like it's, it's pretty rare, but it, honestly, it seems like it ha it's like in bunches though. If there's a team that has Canadians, there's always two or three on there. Is the, uh, your coach is, is he Canadian by chance? He's not. No. So when they He's do, I, I, I I'm sh assume they do a lot of their scouting and whatnot when they first like connect with you. Is that, uh, maybe yeah, like, did you uh, refer my, any of the other guys, any of the younger guys? Yeah. So my situation was super weird. Cause like my friend, Matt, Shalad, he went to Moorhead, but at the time I was playing hockey for the Whippy Fury, and it was on. It was near the end of my career where I knew I wasn't going to make it, and I was not knowing what I was really doing. And Matt called me one day, and he was like, "Hey, what do you think about coming and play for Moorhead?" And I was like, "I haven't touched a club in like two and a half years," <laughs> but. And honestly, like, I always loved golf growing up. I never really took it too serious. I did tournaments, but not, like, the GAO qualifier. I mean, you always had the talent, though. Yeah, I always, like, I always loved it. I always was decent. wasn't the greatest. But when he said that, I, like, I just took the clubs out of the out of the garage. They had spider webs on them. I went to uh, Deer Creek Academy and just grinded for, like, a month and then met my coach in South Carolina at uh, Furman's golf course and uh, shot 83, 81 in front of him. But I hit it like 350 down the middle every time. <laughs> so he just took me based off potential and uh, yeah, it ended up working out. This sounds a little bit like a, uh, like a brotherly Yetman story here. So I, I I've golfed with Bryce here. Uh, somebody who also hits it like 350 down the middle and um <laughs> shoots yeah, yeah. shoots 83 on a good day and uh <laughs> and uh no 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 bryce bryce can put up some low rounds but um but yeah blake is uh somebody who has all the talent in the world but won't uh oh yeah just won't, yeah won't focus on the game but um so you say you get down to moorhead so what was that like like the first year you kind of like i know bryce you wanted to get into some of the college events and stuff can you kind of walk us through what some of that looked like yeah, so my first year was very different because I came in the spring. And I, so I came in the spring. My Compared friend, to what, if people don't know? Like, when would you usually come into? Oh, well, you usually go in the fall, which is in August. We usually go, like, August 15th or something like that. And 
and I came like January 30th or something. And um, usually the weather here isn't that great, but it was actually like 70 degrees every day. So I was like, that was my first thought of what Kentucky was like. <laughs> and we ended up playing every day. And our so our first qualifier was like the first week here. And I go out and I shoot 77 wasn't that great but I knew like I mean it was like 65 degrees like 20 mile an hour winds and I was like I I thought I played pretty decent for my first like qualifier in the winter time and like I'm just come dead last in the qualifier <laughs> and I was like that was like my welcome to college golf moment <laughs> nice a little bit of a wake-up call eh yeah. now um, uh now, fast forward five years. I don't. I don't want to move on from the college too much because it is something that fascinates me. I told you I uh, was lucky enough. I had like an extensive conversation with Andy Walker. I'm not sure if you met him. Um, he's the 1997 NCAA national champ. He was at Lynn University. Now he's at VCU. Um, we talked at length. Um, he'll be back on the podcast in the future. He, uh, big. He's been on the Big Break Ireland before. Really, really great guy. So he gave me kind of like a bit of insight in college golf and you mentioned that you had five years now you're into your fifth year so can you let us know like not you don't have to go each year but um how is it different for you now zach than that first year like obviously oh. scores are getting better your game's getting better you're coaching and stuff but can you kind of explain a little bit of what it's like right now yeah so i would say i'm i'm a, definitely a completely different golfer from when i came so when i came i didn't know anything about golf really I thought I did, but there's just so much more than what you'd think. Like the strategies that I learned, like on the course compared to like, I would just go out there and just fire at every pin and hit driver off every tee box. Like I didn't think there was any other way to play golf. <laughs> so I learned that pretty quickly that you can't do that because you learn, you learn quickly in qualifying because you can't qualify against your team and just hit driver everywhere because you're not going to qualify if you just keep on ripping at OB. Yeah. But yeah, so that that was the biggest learning experience was the strategic part of golf. And then I would say a big part was the mental game too. You never really think of needing it at first, and now it's huge for me. Yeah, but, that's where um, – sorry to cut you off, but I think – you have improved like immensely with that. I feel like that was one of your biggest barriers back when we used to play when we were younger. Like you'd get so frustrated and so mad at yourself. And I had the hockey mentality out there. Yeah, totally. Like, yeah, yeah. But I mean, I've, you've grown out of that immensely. And not that I've really seen you play recently, but just like with the scores you're shooting, you have to have grown out of it because I mean, you're just you're putting up low numbers and. Yeah. So I mean, I saw about two or three mental coaches i saw brett mccabe he's uh he actually does mental work with the alabama football team and he does some pga tour players like guy on our team or alumni josh teeter he played on tour still still on and off the pga tour right now but he was he was a lot of help but it took takes a while it's still getting better but it's a big part of the game so that's funny yeah, you mentioned I, Josh. Josh Teeter's been around the game a long time. I remember uh, yeah. when I was looking up, like I just mentioned Andy. So when I was looking up, uh, he played the Northern Trust like back in, I couldn't even tell you what year it was, I guess early 2000s. And Josh Teeter was on that leaderboard as well. So he's been around the game a long time. And that kind of shows. And I was uh, talking with Ryan Gregnell recently. So he was in the uh, World Long Drives or professional long drive championships the one that bryson went to you know everybody's kind of been following that and um he uh one of the things he mentioned was like kyle berkshire and how long he's or how far he's come with like the mental aspect of it and you still see it in, like when you watch his whole vlogs and whatnot but like he wants to be a pro golfer and and you have to be right you you have to like be able to kind of find yourself and and not just aim down every pin so he kind of hits the ball a long way like you do. Can I, can we touch on a, a couple stock yardages if you don't mind? Yeah. We, um, we don't have to go through the whole bag, but even if you give us like a driver, um, a couple irons, just so we have an idea. So I probably, I mean, I carry my driver probably around like 305, 310. I mean, it's gone down. I think I used to hit it further, but I think, yeah, the, technology, I think the technology has saved me for that part, but more fairways now. Definitely hit it a lot better. 
now, but I'd say, I mean, I, so my irons, so like my three iron, I guess is like 240. And then I have a two hybrid actually. It's like my favorite club in the bag because I hate not hitting driver. So like if I, so my two hybrid goes about 270 when I hit it good. Is it actually a hybrid or is it like one of those like long chunky iron things? Oh yeah, it's a hybrid. It is, okay. It's I like it because it doesn't have offset. Yes. So whenever there's offset, I just think I'm just gonna snap hook it. So this yeah. Well, that's like that gapper club that you grabbed, eh, Bryce. That thing has like a massive offset on it, the tailor made gapper. So I know, but I like that because I can't draw the ball for the life of me. So it makes me kind of like it gives me that mental picture that I can kind of draw the ball. But even though I can't, so then it kind of keeps my big slice out of the picture. Well, in theory, it keeps my big slice out of the picture. I mean, it still comes out here and there. But, um, but yeah, just give us, like, maybe, like, do, like, 7-iron, 8-iron, 56. 7-iron is, like, 190. I'd say 8-iron's, like, 181 or 182 or something. And then my pitching wedge is, like, 155. And then... I have a 58 degree, a 55 degree, and a 51 degree. I played that, uh, yeah, I played that setup before. I, I really liked it. I had the 50, 54, 58, and I, I like that structure. I, I um, changed my wedges this year, and it's it's okay. I just can't, I don't know, I can't play 60 degree unless I'm kind of around the green. Like, that's what feels best for me. But before we move on to from college golf, I just wanted to ask you one more thing. So you touch on some of the instructors, some of the teachers and whatnot instructors i guess um coaches now did you find that to be a big adjustment in your game when because you'll go through and do uh like practice rounds i guess right mm -hmm. yeah so yeah you kind of go through and you're not necessarily hitting the ball at the pin so i i've kind of gotten to that point where i'm learning to you know when i play a course a few times hit the you're trying to you have an aiming zone essentially now did you find that to be a really big adjustment when you got to school because uh, you said you had been away from the game a little bit so it's kind of like you look at a pin you attack a pin doesn't mean you can get anywhere near it so was that a big adjustment and did you find um like it hard to be able to do that so it was hard for me to not aim at a pin because like i hated the fact that if i hit it good it would go where i aimed and it wasn't gonna like i would hit good shots and it wouldn't be at the pin but it took me like took me a while to realize that like so we do decade now i don't know if you know decade scott fawcett it's like this whole new system everyone's pretty much on it and it's like basically to the number where you aim compared to where the flag is so you, it's basically just dispersion. Right. So like once I realized that like you actually are just getting lucky when you hit good shots rather than you just trying to attack pins. It's so like if a pin's tucked left and I aim like let's say like seven feet right of it, like for the majority of the times, like I mean if it's like one – 140 out like you're probably going to hit your spot a couple of times but you're going to be seven feet but and sometimes you're going to push it and then you're going to have like a 20 footer but the times that you do pull it you're going to have a t like a tap in birth yeah yeah. So, I, yeah that's crazy to think about i think it's so overlooked in the game of golf because you think about it, like if you aim at that pin you're like short-sided in the rough but so basically if you if you go all day hitting good targets and you get and you miss it on the right side, you could just stuff darts all day. Well, it eliminates yeah. it eliminates like blow ups too, right? And golf, yeah. you don't track golf stats on like one round; you track them on your season, right? Like that's so by mm -hmm. simply you know aiming down pins for one round, you might shoot a sixty three, but you know that could easily be a you yeah. know seventy eight or something in the next day, right? Depending on wind and all that kind of stuff. So. I mean, there's so there's still times like. I still aim at the pin, but it's it's basically if it's like absurd, right. just tough, like it's just stupid to go at. But like, there's definitely rounds where like I'm feeling it and I don't care, like it's right at it. Yeah, yeah that that part kind of fascinates me. Sorry, Bryce, I didn't mean to cut you off. I just I'm, I'm kind of fascinated by that angle because we're still amateurs here. We're still just kind of enjoying the game, so it's I always like the kind of different mindset. So go yeah, ahead, Bryce. I was, 
that's kind of what I was just touching on is like, I mean, I've been golfing my whole life and I still, to this day, I'm just, I don't even ever think going anywhere outside of five feet around like five foot circle around that pin. But I mean, it bites you in the ass most of the time, but it's just crazy to think about like, like the different mentality of like a, like a semi pro or pro golfer or NCAA golfer compared to like just that amateur. It's like, it gets yeah. overlooked so much and like people don't just don't realize it. It's just, it's fascinating. It's huge for like the days that you don't have it. So like, if you don't have it, those are the days that you can get by with shooting even par by just hitting greens and two putting from like 30, 40, 50 yeah, totally. feet yeah. rather than trying to get up and down all day. Yeah. Sure. So what's, right, uh, what, yeah, what's next? What's next for you? One next? last thing about, uh, just on the NCAA topic, uh, just give us like a day in life. Like, uh, give us like a daily, like, um, a, a day of college golf and then maybe just give us a week kind of just to, like what you go through, how you prepare for tournaments. Um, you don't have to go too in depth, just kind of a brief overview. We, uh, we got workouts on Tuesday and Thursday at nine o'clock. And then, so my, my day in life is a little different because I'm all online. I'm taking grad school. So I literally am pretty much just a golfer in school on the side a little bit. But, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I just wake up, go to workouts. I mean, I'll come back and eat and then go to the golf course and I'll pretty much stay there all day. I'll practice and then sign me up man sign me up for this life it's a pretty nice life honestly so on uh you said you work out tuesday thursday on uh like monday wednesday friday is it just golf all day or is it like class golf come back for class or like how does that work honestly it's just yeah so monday wednesday friday is just kind of like wake up whenever i get to sleep in and then i golf all day nice that's awesome i do school later in the day when when the sun goes down yeah, I mean, it makes sense. I, I'd do the same thing. Um, so moving on, you got anything to add about uh, college golf, Mac, or you think we touched on most of Yeah, no, only? no, that was good. I liked it. You're more than welcome. Let's hop into some of the pro events. So. Um, yeah, I wanted to do um, any, like, future maybe pro events or just, let's say, events outside of college that you have coming up or that you've done, like, recently and just kind of touch on a couple of those. So I go to Arizona in the wintertime, so I'm going to be doing – I play at Post and Butte in Arizona. It's a troon course. It's pretty sick. So I get to practice and play out there every day. And then there's a couple, there's an amateur tournament I think I'm going to do. The I forget what it's called, though. I haven't signed up for it. But I did the Outlaw Tour last year. It's like a mini tour event. Mm-hmm. I'm going to try to do a couple of those there. I mean, I can get some pro shop credit out of it if I play good, so... And that doesn't negate your NCAA eligibility yeah. at all? Because uh, you can get – you can accept pro shop credit. So say uh, if I – and I would get, like, I think you can accept up to $1,000 in pro shop credit. We're kind of falling into the off season a little bit. Um, at least up here you would be. But uh, is there anything that you're working on specifically right now if you want to kind of take that next leap in your game? Right now it's – probably like 40 to 60 yards wedge shots for me and then putting as well like don't get me started on either of those subjects <laughs> bryce has strong points for sure I've, I've been lucky enough to golf with bryce and those are definitely strong points i can putt uh i can't say i'm that good with my wedges anymore but uh yeah i don't know bryce is like 70 I, yards down the fairway. We're, uh, we're never really that great and then they got they got really good but there's always a couple of yardages that bother me. So 40 to 60 is my just not, not so comfortable zone. Got it. Yeah. I uh, yeah, like Mac was just saying, I mean, it's like a lot of holes all of like less than a hundred in and find a way to bogey the hole or it's the worst when you hit it far too. Cause you just want to bomb it on a hole. Yeah. That, and then you're middle of the fairway, 50 yards out and you got a 25 footer for birdie yeah and then you miss it and well me i'd miss it and i'd miss the next putt but yeah anyways enough about me um so you worked at a course in chicago this past summer correct yeah i caddied there so what what was the course called it's uh chicago highlands and that's like i mean i'm not aware of it but i'm sure you saying it's like one of the higher end courses. It's, it's, ten, it's 10 years old now they just okay. built their clubhouse a couple of years ago I mean, okay. it's a course, though. Like, there's a lot of good guys out there. 
it's fun out there i caddied pretty much every day did you enjoy that or was it kind of a grind honestly i mean there's moments that it's a grind but for the most part it's actually a lot of fun i enjoy it like you get to show up to the course you don't have to worry about what you shoot or preparing for the round you just show up give them the yardages it's just normal daily stuff so it's just easy work for me do you uh i've seen a couple of courses they're they're typically like resort style courses so you walk up to like a tee and then they have like a a tee block and then underneath it the caddy's got a cooler he's got a couple like bottles of whiskey or something stashed away anything uh anything like that on any of the courses no we actually didn't have like a caddy shack or anything so i would just show up and wait at the carts unfortunately i wish we had a caddy shack that'd be cool yeah i thought it was pretty cool like i i think uh like it was somewhere over in Mexico and I saw like they, they walked up one of the caddies, like it was on Zyre golf or something. One of the caddies like pulled the T block up, had a, had something going on underneath the ground. Oh, he pulled the, uh, you know, the sprinkler covers. He yeah, pulled one of those it was. It was a full cooler tequila shots or something like that. Yeah. yeah. I saw that. Video. Definitely a fair share of drinking at that course. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. I mean, that's what you want though. Like everyone having fun, everyone kind of, just playing golf no no one's too serious i'm sure you get the pretty exactly. serious guy out there but i mean so there's some uh there's some characters out there <laughs> i bet man i bet did you like the actual experience of caddying like if that opportunity came like i know you're looking at hopefully professional golf but playing in the ncaa you obviously have a pretty thorough or extensive golf background like would you consider caddying i i was lucky enough to and i mentioned to you a little bit earlier i did a couple days like on the canadian tour and i thought it was great um not that i did anything for the golfer i was with but uh i was just there carrying the bag and i, I just i like i'm fascinated by that stuff do you think it's something that you would that you would consider honestly yeah i would i would think about it for sure i mean i would it was it's definitely a lot more fun caddying when you're caddying for somebody that can hit the golf ball where he wants to so then you actually your advice is actually working right rather i mean at highlands like i'll tell a guy like 200 yards to the hole aim at a certain certain spot and he'll just top it three times yeah (laughs) yeah i guess that's a little bit different level but um all right zach one of the questions i always like asking people here and uh it can kind of stump people but um if you're playing golf and you get to play with any three, any other three in your foursome can be musicians, celebrities, golfers. Um, Tiger Woods is on like literally 95% of everybody's list. We'd like to learn a little bit about you. What would be your dream foursome? Yeah, well, I'm going to have to make the percentage go higher. So I'm going to have to go with Tiger. I'd say Brooks Kepka and Jordan Spieth. Even if they're not, but like anyone, like they don't be golf. I, I, I don't know who else I'd go with. Okay. Fair I, was, I mean, I was trying to think of some hockey players, but I, I would still go with those guys. All I, right. I like it. I think you it'd think be, I think it'd be obviously it like, obviously going out with Bryce or uh, with, with Tiger would be amazing. Like it, Oh my God. Uh, that, that's why everybody wants to you can kind of learn so much or just talk to them and nobody knows more about the game than tiger well in my opinion and pretty much everybody else's but i think brooks would be pretty cool to go out with and speed too to see kind of what he like his speed is sort of like somebody mentioned ak before bryce and we were like oh yeah like that'd be so cool to go out with ak and like see his like meteoric rise and like jordan speed had that he didn't fall off like ak did but like obviously he had some injuries and stuff but it'd be really cool to like see some of the things that Jordan Spieth went through in his, in his young career. And then Brooks, uh, I think he would be pretty cool to go out with right now with everything that's going yeah. on. Listen to this for some, I don't know why I just popped in my head, but Brooks, Bryson, Dave Portnoy. <laughs> that'd be, that'd be pretty interesting. I think I would put in like, uh, I don't know. I feel like I'd put in like Dwayne Johnson or like Stone Cold Steve Austin with those two guys or something just to just, like, just in case. Like, oh yeah. Just uh yeah. Or Mick Foley or something like that. Like I'm not a wrestling guy, but just to like really get them going and like, yeah, yeah I know they were at uh, like the Tyson Fury fight the other night and yeah, I don't know. Those guys are uh, doing something for the player impact money for sure. So <laughs> I uh I I just saw it looks like uh Sports Illustrated released that Tiger Woods is still gonna win the eight million dollar first place prize for the player impact uh prize pool oh, really? whatever. Yeah, hasn't hit a golf ball all year. I heard the other day it's like based on clicks too, like how yeah. many times you're getting searched online. So. Uh, yeah. Well I'm sure when that accident happened there was a couple 
Don't click. So, <laughs> hey, Vim, um, this just came to me. I remember um, when we when I talked to you originally about coming on, you told me about a story that you were caddying. Oh, yeah. I want to say a guy made like a 13 or something you were saying, or I kind of forget what. I think it was 13, so it was just a normal round. It was actually easy, so it was just was two he a guys. decent golfer or no? He like, ended up being he ended up being okay. Okay. So the the start it was just two guys and it was a four caddy. So I just hop on the back of the car, just easy day. So mm-hmm. this, they both just stripe it down the middle, and I was like, thank thank goodness these guys can play some golf. <laughs> and the one guy uh, hits it short and um, chips it up to like about ten feet. And I'm like, all right, this guy's a player. And then, so his next shot, he puts it into the bunker because it's like a, <laughs> it's like a false edge. So it goes into the bunker, and then he blades it out. And then, so he blade he blades it out. He blades it into the fescue that's just straight right of the bunker, and then chops it out of the fescue, and then flubs it, flubs it again flubs it one more time and then three jabs <laughs> so hold on hold on i'm not a it mathematician but 13. he, he yeah. well he shot a nine from 10 feet all right Vim. um jr smith he uh signed with north carolina a t to play golf after his nba career um i mean that's crazy to me anyways um I think it's good, but I think it's crazy. Uh, what are your thoughts being in the NCAA yeah, yeah. with him? I think for him, I mean, I think it's kind of absurd, but he's got the eligibility. So, I mean, he doesn't really have to go work anymore the rest of his life. But I, I think it's cool, but I think it'd be sick to be on that team, being with uh, being teammates with him. Yeah. That'd be awesome. I wouldn't even know what they do if he, if he does practice with all of them. Or if he, yeah, I know he doesn't go in the team van with him because <laughs> he just rolled up in a Bentley. <laughs> One of the things I, I have heard is he's like been involved with the team. Like he's gone to like any of the uh, practice rounds. He's gone to any like the, the coaching, like any of the instructing. Um, so it seems like he kind of bought into it, but it is one of those things where it's like, it's very, very prominent on social media right now. So you don't know if that is a short-term thing or if that's going to be a long-term thing. Like you say, rolled up in a Bentley's probably (laughs) one of the only guys playing an actual like circle T out there. I I don't know. It's like a, probably got like a $10,000 putter, but yeah, I, I think it's good though. Like it's, again, it's um, brought more, more eyes to the NCAA game. Right. So kind of like the world of Bryson at the long drive. And that's one of the things I talked with uh, Ryan Gregnell about, um, was how many eyes it just put on the sport right so whether it's uh ncaa professional long drive whatever it may be it doesn't really matter if he's like if there's no negative connotations to it i'm i'm all for it like bring him out let him play he's got game like he didn't he's got a deep decent swing he looked okay like that i thought it was all right he's not he wasn't in contention by means but he wasn't dead last i mean he can play bottom line yeah I mean that. So we used to play that course at Elon. We we went to that tournament, and uh, I mean, it's not the easiest course. So he he didn't he didn't play too bad. He probably had he probably had the golf jitters. Oh, I'm pretty oh, sure. Used to the golf jitters, and but he can play in an NBA Finals. <laughs> yeah, he was like quoted saying, "I guess it was he has a, I don't know. He's more nervous standing over a three footer than a." Uh, <laughs> jumper to win a championship in the nba right yeah. so i guess golf just does that it's like it's oddly polarizing it is uh terrifying at times right so um vim you're from this area are you familiar with triple bogey brewing i am yes okay so what we do here is called the swing oil segment hydrated by triple bogey brewing we're gonna ask you a couple questions always nice to learn a little bit more about you um and uh yeah we uh we get some some triple bogey so the next time you're in the area we'll uh we'll definitely put some on your uh front porch or i'll give some to bryce he'll uh drink them before they get to you but uh we gotta know have you ever had a hole in one i've never had one no really any uh any close calls what's that any close calls I've had a bunch of close calls i've had a couple lip outs i mean so this summer i had a 
I hit a double, like I almost had a double eagle on a par five. I had it literally sitting on the lip and I was just staring at it, wondering how it didn't go in. Wow. I did that in Florida this year. I hit, I went driver eight iron and it one bounce hit the stick and literally sat four inches from the hole. I've had some like absurd eagles though in my life. Like I've dunked it from like 80 yards. That was at OGC, just destroyed the cup. It was an <laughs> awesome feeling. And then actually at my conference championship, my second round on the par five. So I'm one under going on to like hole six or seven, I think. And I and I have like 280 out, and I'm like I'm 100% hitting three wood on this green, and I just block slice it straight into the weeds, and I'm like 70 yards, 60 70 yards out, in the middle of the weeds, like so dead, and I just I just get a I just get my lob wedge, get a club on it, and it hits the front of the green takes one hop hits the middle of the flag stick and rolls down into the hole it was the most electric thing i've ever done <laughs> that's <laughs> awesome all right well next question favorite snack on the turn um gotta say uh probably a turkey sandwich honestly <laughs> can be liquid too it can be liquid but uh favorite track you've ever played tpc scottsdale favorite oh. track period same course uh that i played yes or... yes that you i'd played. probably say tpc scottsdale okay i mean it's hard to beat that one but yeah um favorite on course beverage can be alcoholic or non-alcoholic non-alcoholic probably uh purple powerade i'm gonna go with that okay and uh lowest round you've ever carded shot 62 recently nice. right yeah it was like two, three two. weeks ago four weeks ago yeah three or maybe three weeks ago yeah in a right. tournament too actually no it wasn't tournament oh uh, low in a tournament 65 that's still a nice round so that yeah. is the swing oil segment hydrated by triple bogey brewing thanks so much zach um ncaa player hopefully we see in the pros in the future and if you're in the area get a hold of bryce get a hold of me and uh we'll get you some triple bogeys appreciate it yeah. if thanks. he ever makes it pro I'm on the bag We've already decided. So. I have, uh, you can see oh, yeah. the bit behind me. I have more, um, I have a lot more experience than Bryce. So, yeah, I, I just know. know Vim's game. So now that's on the record and he has someone else out there, you guys can all give him flack. So, Bryce's been heckling me for a while for that. Well, so Zach, there first, bud. I uh, appreciate you coming on. All the best to you. Looking forward to, uh, to seeing where you take your golf game. If anybody wants to follow you, where can they get a hold of you? Um, typically, we kind of will plug an IG down in the uh, description. So I got Instagram. It's cviminets, I think. Or it might be vi – actually, it's vimmer underscore nine. Okay, perfect. My Twitter's cviminets. Perfect, underscore. okay. I'll, uh, I'll grab a link for anybody who might want to come over to track your game, anybody interested in the NCAA. And uh, thanks for following us at OTS Golf on Instagram and on the Scripps Podcast on YouTube. Thanks again, guys. He's out in my ball and of course so I tee up. I lose the ball and I re up. I miss the fairway, I probably end up in the ocean or maybe the beach. And I'm on a par five and I'm finna go reach it. Second was blind, I see it. Feel like it might be an average. I was working.